Welcome back Bass Modders. In this video I'm going to show you how to shim a bass neck. So I've got this guy on the bench today. It's a Fender Squire P-Bass. It's in really great shape. Um, I've already adjusted the relief in the neck. It's got about, I guess about 10 thou of relief. Um, I've uh, shown that already in a couple of my videos. Um, and I've got the strings down to roughly where they're gonna be. Um, but if you look carefully, you can see that we're almost running out of adjustment in the saddle height adjustment grub screws. Um, there's a problem with that, and that is that your hand can scratch on those. It can actually take the skin off your fingers, um, and it can also ruin the inside of your gig bag as well. Um, I could simply just put shorter grub screws in there. These are M3s in uh, virtually all Asian-made bridges. Um, these will be M3 grub screws, um, and you can pick up those if you do replace them. I recommend stainless steel um, and just put shorter ones in there and it'll work. But I'm also starting to run out of adjustment here and uh, I think once I've done a full fret dress and set up on this base, I actually might need, I, I might well run out of adjustment there. Um, plus it's nice to get the saddle heights a little bit higher, that way the, the brake angle over them with the strings is a little bit tighter, gives you a slightly better tone I guess. I should back up actually and tell you that a shim, if you don't already know, is placed under the neck heel in a bolt-on neck. And the idea is that it just very slightly changes the angle of the neck and that way the whole geometry of the instrument is shifted um, and the strings will actually go over the bridge slightly higher once it's all set up, which is what we want. I've seen all sorts of things in there from bits of cardboard to guitar picks, bits of sandpaper, um, but I like to actually put pieces of uh, hardwood veneer um, I've got some um, Tasmanian blackwood there, um, which I like to use, and I like to shape it very carefully and also glue it in place, um, and that way the, the, the neck is still really nice and firmly in that neck pocket. It's very important to get that, not just for tone, but also for tuning stability. If the neck sort of creaks or moves, and this one's actually pretty good as is, but if it does move in there, then as soon as the neck shifts, um, it'll just go out of tune, the bass will go out of tune. So first thing I'm going to do, um, so I can make the shim as close as possible as it's likely to need straight off the bat, I'm actually going to do a few measurements um, and a little bit of trigonometry. So the first thing I'm going to measure is the distance from the back of the neck pocket to the bridge. It's a bit hard with the camera in the way, but uh, that looks like it's uh, 359 millimeters and I'm also going to measure the distance from the back edge of the neck pocket to the front of the neck heel and that is 90 96 millimeters and finally I want to measure the height of these um, uh, grub screws and work out just how much I want to drop them. So the outer ones are about three millimeters and the inners are about two. So yeah, let's call that two and a half millimeters. So we want to um, change the height of the strings by 2.5 millimeters and this dimension here is 359 obviously this triangle is nothing like to scale but uh, by demonstration it'll be fine and then all we have to do if this is 96 millimeters we have to find whatever this height is here and that's going to be the thickness of the shim that I make so the first step is to work out this angle here and then I can use a bit of uh, trigonometry to work out this height. So if you don't remember high school maths, then you can use an online calculator. So we're gonna solve for A, uh, sorry, we already know A and H, 
um, and we're going to solve for the angle. Uh, so this was 359 and we want a height of 2.5. That gives us an angle of uh, 0.4 degrees. So if we go back and solve for height, knowing the angle and the base, uh, so the base is 96, was it 96 millimeters? And the angle is 0.4 of a degree, it gives us a height of 0.67 of a millimeter. So I'm going to aim for a shim around about 0.7 millimeters, or maybe just under. Huh, that's a new one on me. It's got a hole right through the neck heel. I think it was like that from the factory. I guess all factories have different methods and different ways of doing things. I guess that was to hang the body. Uh, for spray finishing or buffing or something um, but I'm going to fill this whole area to the uh, screws with a shim so I'm going to make a piece initially that is about 33 millimeters wide and I'm also going to put a, an intermediate piece of shim across the uh, top of the neck pocket halfway between the screws as well and that really just has to be about 20 mil or maybe 15 millimeters wide. So here's the material I'm going to use. It's uh, cabinet makers veneer. You can buy massive long uh, pieces and wide pieces of this for pretty cheap from veneering specialists. So that's 0.6, so it's just a hair under what we need, but I think I'll run with it because we can always add. So once this is installed, obviously it's the front edge of it that we want to be our 0.6 and it's actually going to have a very subtle, a very slight taper to it. Um, I'm going to be kissing the top of it with some sandpaper as well as the other piece I'm going to glue in. Um, but I'm going to start that tapering process now on the bench. Alright, so I've got the back edge of that to about 0.4 of a mil. Um, this is ready to be glued in. So now I'm going to cut out the second piece of shim. Uh, I'm just going to cut it to the width of this little ruler and about 100 mils long. That's looking pretty good. So now these are ready to glue in. Um, you could use super glue for this sort of thing, um, and I often do, but because the bottom of this 
neck pocket is actually really quite uneven, especially up this end. I'm going to use tight bond because it'll sort of fill those gaps because it's such a thick glue. If you do use super glue, I guess you could use the gel super glue, which would work much the same. Because of this big hole here, uh, I can't really put glue on the bottom of this because it'll all sort of drip in there. Instead, I think I'll actually, for this piece, I'm going to mask this off and put the glue on the neck pocket instead. And I'm just going to push this with a rag and grab any squeeze out. Now I can use the neck itself as a clamp, but I'm just going to use these two screws. That way it's not rocking on this if it's still a bit high. So it's been about an hour. The glue um, won't be fully cured. It's actually quite cold today, uh, but it'll be set enough uh, to just sand the tops of those shims. In that time, I've serviced the machine heads. They've all been pulled apart and lubricated. Um, I've also done a bit of work on the electronics. I did put a new jack in this base. The old one was okay, but the owner of the base is a professional player, so I think he should have a good switchcraft jack in the instrument. I've also used a little bit of that uh, shimming timber material on the tops of the bobbins because the pole pieces were really uh, quite proud of the covers in this instrument and you just catch your fingers on them, it's very annoying. So they've been shimmed down. To sand, I've actually double-sided taped some 120 grit onto a, a block that's been trued. I've used double-sided tape for two reasons. Firstly, so the, the bottom is nice and flat, but mostly because I don't want to sand the sides of the neck pocket. So the sandpaper is just on the bottom. As I mentioned, the bottom of this neck pocket's not dead flat. In fact, it's slightly got a kind of a U-shaped dished profile on the bottom of it, which is not ideal. Um, so I'm gonna have to keep checking with my ruler. Uh, to make sure I'm staying nice and flat. I've got to focus on this side actually because it's particularly bad on that side. Um, I'm going to mark the shim with pencil. That way I know exactly where I've been sanding. So you can see the buildup of dust on either side um, and you can see where there's still a little bit of pencil mark here and across here. Let me check that with the ruler. Oh, it's rocking slightly on that side still and it's pretty good for the rest of it. Well, because of the build-up of finish here, we've actually gone right through the shim. It doesn't matter actually, because it's still going to be, uh, we really just want it as flat as possible. So with a little bike light and a short straight edge, I can uh, check just how flat the bottom of this is. Um, and that looks great. So it's time to put the neck back in, I think. Well, the neck's back on. Uh, it's absolutely rock solid in there, which is good news. I've got the strings on, they're up to pitch. I didn't adjust the truss rod or anything, so the relief is exactly where it was. And I've set the string heights to just about where they're gonna be once the base is all set up. The saddles are now at an appropriate height. The grub screws are just underneath the tops of those saddles. Um, so that's a win, I guess. Um, who'd have thought trigonometry would actually be useful in the real world? Anyway, um, this guy's gonna go onto my neck jig and get a good old fret dress. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit like share, subscribe, comment, and um, what's the other one, bell? Um, and I'll see you in the next one.